he's constantly subtweeting and like you know no making kidding. fun of Trump. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> wow, that's gonna be fun. I'm that's sure. a fun household. Yeah, I don't know. But what's this is what gets me. Go full screen in this. Yeah. Go. F you can't. But what's interesting is these dummies behind him. Yeah. Like while this is happening, one of the interesting oh, things about this color. to me Which is that. His back is to all these people, which is very odd, right? So they're all behind him. Instead of having a static backdrop, you, you're getting to – part of the thing is the other people. It's not just him. It's their reactions. Yeah, it's, it's a sense of belonging to a weird group, Yeah, right? And everyone has that, like leftists and rightists and whatever all have this weird belonging. But when it's – Again, it goes back to the China thing, right? Well, we have Fox News. We have a way of yeah. giving people information that if you follow – I follow Fox News on Twitter because I want to see what they're telling people, yes, right? And yes. it's, a, it's a weird thing because it's not like it's all lies, right? There's there's often lies. They're there. But it's like a very different mixture of yeah. things than you would get from the rest of the media. And a lot of it is – it's very clear if you if you follow Fox News, like they're they're targeting an older white, uh, rural suburban audience, right? Yes. So there's a lot of like weird human interest stories about an alligator popping out of the sewer and things like that, like sure. things that are not they they have no political <laughs> agenda, but they're just trying to get they, those old white people to pay attention. Yeah, well, they're they're sending a message that the world is kind of scary and weird, and you know we need to protect ourselves. There's and an it, alligator like, all, on the golf course. They really, yeah, like they love those stories, right? <laughs> It's, it's, the alligator of the golf course is my favorite. It's just local news. Yes. It's the 10 o'clock local news put you know, uh, nationwide and added in there with some uh, cheerleading for this <laughs> bizarrely dysfunctional administration. Well, isn't Sean Hannity now the number one watch cable news program? I, something like that. Yeah, I don't know the number. I think but. it's number one, and it's fucking awful. <laughs> they just they – just, uh, <laughs> there was just a poll. This goes back to the you know social credit thing. They did a poll. What is the most trusted news source? Um, and Fox News came in number two. What's number one? BBC. That makes sense. Well, CNN is just taking a giant hit because of his constant, constant berating of them. And then you see Jim Acosta. You know the whole these all these pro wrestling fans like giving him the finger and screaming at him. And yeah, and it's it's, it's like, what. I, I, I do worry uh, that this is a hard thing to come back from because, you know, once you, you know, like one another thing that Trump said was that, you know, don't believe anything you're told, Oof. right, unless you yeah. hear it from me. And Sean right. Hannity says the same thing. No, I was – sorry, Tucker Carlson said the same thing, right? Did he say that too? Tucker Carlson said, like, yeah, any other show than this one, don't believe it. Yeah, look at this. Fuck the media he has on. Yeah. Women for Trump. Yeah, it's just – what? And then – after w listening to this Radio Lab podcast about these Russian troll farms and about how they implement these things, you got to think: Is all of this organic? Is how many of how right. much of this is orchestrated? How it's, much of this attacking CNN is orchestrated? It's part of it is part of it is it's just it, it builds on itself. Well, right? All you need like, is just a little bit of a push. I was talking to someone who is uh, who is you know boasting about how hard Donald Trump works. That like co compared to previous presidents, he's really just putting in the hours. Oh, that's which not true, is, right? Like really, <laughs> the, the least plausible thing that you could think about. Yeah, him, he right? wakes up late. He watches yeah, eight he watches hours of TV, TV a day. plays golf every day. He's like spends all the time at his own resorts. <laughs> like of all the fantasies you could invent, that's yeah. a very weird one. Well, people just love to find narratives that fit what what would be you know acceptable for their opinions. Uh, this this side that they've taken. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. And you so know. he, you know, he give him credit. He gives people a narrative that works for them. Well, you know, CNN does it too, because CNN they they spent so little time uh, going over Donna Brazil's book about uh, how the DNC had been corrupted and about how they had rigged the primaries for Hillary and really screwed Bernie Sanders over. This was not a narrative that they dwelled on. They didn't dwell on the fact that she illegally deleted 30-plus thousand emails and said they were about yoga classes. <laughs> I mean, like That, yeah, that shit I is mean, just as preposterous and is, just uh... as – it's just as damning – against CNN as some of the nonsense that Fox News does. There's no one pure organization of news that's wholly objective. It's not just as damn. I, I, I think that Fox News is special. 
I especially really do. damning. I think that Fox, I mean, yeah. Fox News was founded by a guy who was a political operative for the Republican Party, right? right. Like, there might, like, individual reporters from most no news organizations tend to be liberal. Uh, but they also sometimes tend to overcorrect for that, like to try to bend over backwards to be fair. Like way more Republicans are quoted in the New York Times than Democrats ever are. Mm. And I, I think that there are certainly biases and certainly um, uh, misrepresentations of reality from all of these different outlets. But I think Fox News is special among the major ones. I would I would concede that. And But I also think that w one example, like the New York Times is different because – the New York Times, I feel like, because of the fact that it's, it's actually writers and it's in text, you're you're not dealing yeah. with people that have to be comfortable performing in front of a camera, which eliminates a large swath of intellectuals. Right, <laughs> it's a very different medium. It's and, a different, and they fact check and you know, uh, it's carnival cor corrections, yeah. you know, in a way that uh, the TV does not. Yeah, yeah it's absolutely. theater. Yeah. it's a different thing. Yeah, and uh, people like Sean Hannity, that if you read his written word. I don't think he would stand out. No, and I and again, I, like I said before, it, I worry about what happens next because I I don't think that Trump will win again. I think he will. All right, I, I don't I think, think it's so. entirely possible he'll win again. Yeah, it would be. But again, I didn't Did you think, think he was going to win the first time. No, I did not. So I was yeah. just going to say, don't listen to me. Like uh, before Donald Trump, I was really good at predicting who was going to win elections, and the, I have no ability once he's in the in the game. So. But I, I worry that the people who sort of are on his side are going to feel even more disenfranchised and disenchanted and angry after he loses again than they do now. And that's that's going to be a problem. I think that's a real fear. And I, I think that w the, one of the reasons why I said it's entirely possible, and I don't know if he will win again, but I don't even know if I believe he'll win again, but I think it's a possibility. And I think that one of the reasons why I think that is I don't see wh who's the, the big candidate on the other side that's opposing him. That stands out right now. Yeah, that's a problem. And I think there's a real issue with people not wanting the job. It's, <laughs> it, it's a really scary job. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it, it sucks you dry like a vampire that's hooked up to the back of your neck. It's just so, even with him, with his unique ability to sociopathically sort of navigate the waters of accusations yeah. and guilt, he still looks beaten down by this job. Yeah, but people want it. Maybe not the people we want to want it, right? Who but, wants uh, it on the Democrat side? Who wants it on the left that stands out? I mean, I think I, I'm not excited by any of the people right now, but I think— No one is. I bet there's going to be 10 people running at least. <sighs> I mean, Boy. I think that Biden is at least 50% chance to run. Elizabeth Warren's definitely going to run. Uh, Do you think Corey Elizabeth Warren, though, she's got that real problem with the whole Pocahontas thing? Well, the, that whole Indian thing. Whether you're going to run created that narrative is different that than she, whether you're going to win. Yeah. Right, but that that is a giant problem. The pr the thing that she may have faked, whether or not she has Native American heritage, and she's not willing to take a DNA test, and there's this Native American heritage she claimed is how she got into Harvard, and she she used that in order to get special status, and that's a problem. You know, whether or not you should forgive someone for something they did a long, long time ago, which I think you probably should. the The problem is. It sort of, in some ways, negates a lot of the good work and things that she said because people say, I can't trust her. She lied about her actual ethnicity. Yeah, it's, but what is hard for me to do is to predict how much it will matter, right? Like yeah. in 2008, we had uh, a race between a Vietnam War hero and a black guy whose middle name was Hussein. Right. <laughs> like if you had told me that a few years earlier, who's going to win? Yeah, but uh, we, I would have gotten that one wrong. We also had Sarah Palin. I think yeah, exactly. If, if this is what we don't know. Had taken a better running mate. It's entirely possible McCain would have been president. I think that people were really tired of George W. And I think that uh, McCain was just not a good candidate. I think he was going to lose no matter what. Well, I think also Obama was so charismatic yeah. and so uniquely intelligent and smooth and relaxed and statesmanlike. I think he he fit the bill. But of remember, what we wanted people a were worried about like he went to Jeremiah Wright's church and things like that, right? Right. Stuff that didn't like at the time it was a big deal, and you know who cares? Eight years later, right? Yeah. So I don't know about the Pocahontas stuff. Um, ah, that's not that's a big one though. The Pocahontas know. stuff is a big one because it's a personal lie. I don't know. But yeah. again, I mean, I think Cory Booker's going to run. Kamala Harris might run. Uh, who knows? There's a mm. bunch of people. I, I would not be at all surprised if Joe Biden didn't run. I, mean, I kind of don't think that he should, but uh, he's getting up there. 
And he's you a know, Washington insider, which is not really what the country wants right in now. In 1988, in Boston, we used to have Joe Biden night at the comedy clubs. And Joe Biden night was a night where we would do other people's material. Because this is when <laughs> Joe Biden right, got was, busted yeah. with Kennedy speeches. Yeah, well, and Neil Kinnock, the British politician, yes. stole from him, too. And this was when he was running for president in 88. Right. And so... We, he's never done very well running for president. Like he's no. run several times. It's so I, I'm. I think that he was a good vice president, and people like him for that. And they might not want him to do more than that. Vice president is a great job if you want no one to pay attention to you. Yeah, you know yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? It's like being the the you know the the co-star in a buddy cop movie with a huge superstar. Very few responsibilities. Yeah. Go to some funerals. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Easy. Yeah, Easy unless you're gig. Mike Pence, where you're trying to, you know, make it the Handmaid's Tale behind the scenes. He seems like he's kind of laying back, though. Like, especially over the last few months, like that Trump is so insane that you see very little Mike Pence. I don't think he, uh, you see very little of him, but I think that he's trying his best to put in policies behind the scenes. Well, um, what is this new thing that Jeff Sessions is trying to push? Religious freedom. Yes. Which means you have to obey whatever the fundamentalist Christians <laughs> want to well, do. Yeah, well, this is what, you know, Michael Malice was tweeting about this the other day when, it, when he, he, he tweeted this. He said, when I said that a version of Sharia law could very well be coming out of this administration, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a weird backward thing where you define religious freedom to be let fundamentalist Christians do whatever they want, right? Yeah, and—, and, and do it by law. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's it's tricky because, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if someone wants to, uh, part of me is a little bit libertarian when it comes to personal action. Like, if someone doesn't want to deal with you, that's their right. Yeah. But when whole groups are being subject systematically to discrimination, like gays are, then yeah, the government steps in to protect them a little bit, and I think that's okay.